Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about our single arm kettlebell clean and press. Probably the most fundamental thing I'll probably teach you. The single arm clean and press is super duper important. It is fundamental. You should do a lot of them. When I say a lot, I mean building up to 75 reps on each side over the course of a broken structure of training, but kind of your end goal is 75 reps on each side, 150 reps total. We'll talk about math in a different video, but this movement is the basis for bodybuilding of any type. Is like, this is super fundamental to athletic development. I could not express more how important this is. This movement has cross body stabilization. It has hip extension, it has crown and coccyx alignment, it has leg drive, it has overhead extension. It extends the spine, extends the shoulder, extends the hip, extends the knees. It is important. Let's work on it. We have videos on both the clean and the press, but we do not have a video on the clean and press together. We are going to point both of our feet straight ahead. This is slightly different from other coaches who might encourage a mild turnout, but because I want you eventually to link the clean and press into other types of complex movement, I want you to do it as if you are moving and your feet should be pointed pretty much straight ahead when you're moving, unless you're a ballerina and you're turning out for a very specific aesthetic reason. Point two feet straight ahead. The kettlebell is you know, 12 to 18 inches in front of us. We're going to rotate the kettlebell so the handle is vertical. We are gonna take the L of our hand to the L of the kettlebell. And we are going to point our thumb back in relation to our body. We do this so that we can straighten our arm all the way out at the bottom of the clean if we maintain tension while doing this for high reps under heavy load, we are definitely going to get an injury right in here somewhere. And it's super annoying. Let's not do that. Injuries cost time and they therefore cost you training time. Training time is money outcome the whole nine L to the L push the weight back, stand up with your hips, extend your hips all the way. Elbow stays close to the body bring the arm up. This is not a bicep curl. The weight is propelled by the speedy extension of the hips. We catch forearm is going to be vertical. Our elbow is going to be driving down. So we're not lifting our shoulder, shoulder away from ear, elbow towards hip bone, verticalize the forearm and make your wrist flat. No barbell wrist. It's not a barbell. Move the kettlebell around your body, not your body around the kettlebell in this version. <sighs> Clean it up. Elbow to hip, thumb to collarbone. Drive the shoulder away from the ear. Squeeze the glutes. Drive the legs straight. Pull the kneecaps up. Breathe behind the shield. From this position, <sighs> we are going to press to our overhead lockout. The goal is to get to overhead lockout squeezing your triceps as hard as you can. If your elbow is soft, that's bad over time. Drive the elbow straight, pull the shoulder down, try and fire the lat. <sighs> Bring it straight back down. From here, push the weight out, rotate the arm to point the thumb back. <sighs> that is a rotating spiral for your arm. And now there is a matching spiral in the press to go up. The hand spirals from thumb pointed back to thumb pointed towards your center line. Bring it down, rotate thumb to collarbone, point the thumb back, extend the hips as hard as you can. Thumb to collarbone, open, spiral up, lock out, bring the weight down. At the top of this movement, we want these two knuckles to be the highest. We want a straight line down through this arm to the elbow. What we do not want is some type of barbell wrist where you would be modifying to make it flat. And there would be a kink in this arm. Think about these two knuckles being straight up and down. If this were a punch, you would be presenting these two knuckles to the target. During this press, we press up. These two knuckles are the highest. If these two knuckles, the little knuckles are the highest, we are doing it not as right as we could be. Drive the wrist 
away. It should almost look like a 45 degree angle down. Bring it down. When we have that kettlebell up overhead, we should see that handle be down at a 45 degree angle. If we see it be parallel, then we're probably crunching something in this part of our wrist and we would like to make that better. That's where the L of our hand comes into the L of the kettlebell. This helps a lot. So we get one point of contact and we should have the handle resting on the bone and our wrist should be flat so our fingers can be pointed up. If our fingers are pointed some other direction, figure out how to fix it. This is an exercise you should be practicing a lot. Anytime you leave training and you come back, you go back to this exercise over and over and over again. And you work on it in many different ways with many different set schemes in order to get good at it. At the top of that press, we wanna be driving that rib cage down and squeezing those glutes. When the weight is all the way up overhead, we should be squeezing our glutes the hardest. When people stop training for periods of time, Glute function tends to be the first thing to go because we sit down a lot, we sit in cars, we sit at work, we sit when we travel, the glute function tends to go. If we're doing this press and our glutes are not squeezed, then we will probably feel strain in our lower back. So we always come back to this activity to practice our hip extension, squeeze the glute, hold the glute through the range of motion of the press, and then it relaxes at the bottom, the hamstrings load, snap back up. Glute function is kind of key to everything. If you have back pain, practice this exercise. Make sure you squeeze the glutes. There are many ways to do this exercise with light weights. You can do it for your normal strength training, which is three to five reps. If you have heavy weights, you can work on that. And then you add sets to create volume cycles. See our nerd math videos to reference that. I like to do these with other types of protocols, but eventually, usually it takes a couple of years for people to get strong enough where they can start to do this as a time under tension protocol, where you can do a minute on one side, a minute on the other side, unless your programming is specifically for that. Every time you do a clean and press, think about your core is firing in what? Three different positions, fire one, fire two, fire three, fire four, start over. One, two, three, four. For every one rep, your core changes shape four times. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica.